Hey folks, it's Dr. Brenda, founder of the Gutsy Women Club, where women dare to dream and take bold actions to follow the heart's journey. Full-time RVer traveling with three cats. Hey, please subscribe below, follow along, and hey, find out all the great stuff that's happening with the Gutsy Women Club. Today is Gutsy Women Wednesday, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'm having fun just making this video. This video is about play, how important it is to add play into your, yes, adult life. So here's the thing. We think of play as something that kids do, right? You know, they've got their puppets. They, they uh, play hide and seek. All these things and odds are high that you had your favorite games too when you were a kid. And then we become adults and we've got all these responsibilities and, you know, play is frowned upon. Um, even going to the gym is, oh, we want results. We want, we want to lose weight. We want to get fit. A lot of times that's not play. It's work, which is why so many gym memberships lapse. Okay. So what would happen if you could create play within your regular schedule, your regular week. And I know you're like, I'm stretched for time. Um, ain't no way that's going to happen. And what does this have to do with being a gutsy woman? Okay. Let me tell you what. Play is about yourself. It's not about pleasing anyone else. It is intrinsic to you. My version of play is totally different from your version of play. Maybe. You have different ways of playing. It's about reconnecting with yourself, refreshing. Refreshing your life. And that's really what it's like to be a gutsy woman. A lot of folks have, a, have like, you know, what is, who am I? I've been following the rules of society for years, for decades. Who am I now deep down inside? I've done all those things that I'm supposed to do. What if play was that thing that sort of unlocked your dream life, unlocked who you were and what you wanted to do, unlocked your definition of joy and how to get it? I think play is incredibly important. I'm coming at you today from my playground. This is my playground for the week. Now, I was having a challenging time trying to come up with a video for Gutsy Women Wednesday. And last night I went out for a walk, been watching the sun go down over here and then, you know, getting my butt back to the campground because the sun goes down. It's a little dark out here. And here's the thing. I am having a blast out here. Okay. I've you know, grew up in the Midwest, spent a lot of time on the East Coast, spent some time on the West Coast. But my concept of trails were, um, you know, well-worn paths. And oftentimes the tree had a, you know, red blaze, blue blaze. You could, you could follow your way along the trail. It's not, I'm in a canyon. There aren't trees. There's no blaze. So um, what I'm following are cairns, rock cairns, C-A-I-R-N-S. Okay, if you're don't not from this area, you probably don't know about this because I never, never even gave it a second thought. So I'm looking for piles of rocks. That's what lines up, lines the trail. And I've gotten off the trail more than once, and I backtracked. And I'm like, okay, where's where's the next mound of rocks? And sometimes there are also tree limbs that sort of like, oh, don't go here that kind of line the path, but you got to be really aware of your surroundings. And it's like, I'm back, I'm being transformed into childhood. I have been hiking my tail off this week and it doesn't feel like work. It feels like, it feels like play. It is, it is, I'm just having a blast. So I'm following, it's like a secret route, you know, and I'm trying to follow this and, and I am like scrambling up rocks and the trails are unlike anything, anything I've ever been on. And I'm, I'm in Utah, by the way, uh, um, visited arches yesterday. I was at Canyonlands. I'm at Dead Horse Point State Park. It's their version of the Grand Canyon behind me. And it's, it's just magnificent. I feel there's so much energy here. 
I, I'm almost feel like there's an addiction to these, this place, these trails, but I'm having a blast. This is my version of play. So I ask you, like, think about the things that you enjoyed in childhood, okay? Give it some thought. So I go back to my childhood, and I grew up on a farm, so we played at tag in the haymow. Uh, my brother and I, you know, we'd get our little banana seed bikes and and ride around in the barn, you know, between the, in front of the, where the stanchions were. I mean, we played cops and robbers and we did all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of, most of my life I've had a motorcycle. I've, that's been a form of play for me. And then also my mom would periodically, or especially before Christmas, I'd get like a Christmas ornament kit or little Christmas ornaments to paint. I love that stuff. That was like, oh, a craft. I get to do a craft. Now, to you, those things might sound torturous, right? So you go back into your childhood and think about the things that brought you joy. Now, I did, I mean, I can't quite totally turn my academic hat off. So I ran into this um, article. Renee Pryor is the author, and it's in a journal called personality and individual difference and what he did is he developed four categories of playful personality traits okay so i'm gonna lay this out here for you and see if any of these res resonate with you category one is called other directed and here your your thing is playing with other people so Maybe it's a board game, maybe it's a game of soccer, but it generally involves other people. That's, that's your biggest style of play. A second one is just lighthearted play. So you're not taking life too seriously. You like to improvise. You're just kind of like, you're spontaneous, kind of going with the flow. That's that second type. The third type is intellectual. And intellectual means you are drawn to ideas and thoughts and, and you know, problem solving. Maybe you're playing video games or you're playing some word games, things that are more intellectual in kind. Fourth kind is whimsical. And whimsical is you like doing odd or unusual things in everyday life. I think that's, that's a little bit why I love the RV life, because every day is a little bit different. It's not all fun and games. It's not all play, but I get a different playground almost every week. Um, I, um, so you can actually have a blend of these things. Like I love playing board games. You give me a good, good group of friends and board game. That is a lot of fun to me. Um, intellectual, I play wordscapes almost every night on my iPad. Um, so, yeah, you can have different elements of your personality. Uh, for me, now here's the thing. I, I'm very goal-oriented. I love results. I love challenges. This exhilarates me. It's a little bit of a challenge because, yeah, I got to find that path. I got to find, find the trail, and it, it's, it can be challenging. I, if I lose my way, there's a little bit of exhilaration. I got to back up. But here's the thing with the hiking and, and, and play for me is that it's not results driven. So I've talked a little bit, and if you've seen my before and after photos and even gone back to my earlier videos, you've, you know I've lost a lot of weight on the, on, on my, in my RV life. I've lost a lot of weight. A large part of that is intermittent fasting. But I think an equal part of this goes towards play and lower levels of stress. Sure, I make the videos. I work as a financial coach. I'm redoing the Gutsy Women Club. I've got all kinds of things going on. I'm very, very creative, always creating. But the stress level has declined tremendously since being out here. I feel like I'm, I'm de-wrinkling, okay? I'm having a, a blast in a lot of times. And it's the play. It's it's, uh, I went whitewater rafting a couple of days ago. You just, you're focused on the beauty. You're focused on the waves splashing over the, the you know, the raft. It's just, um, it's just, you're, you're forced to live in the present. Here, I'm forced to live in the present. I gotta look ahead, find that next 
next marker, that next cairn. And, but I'm focused on the present. My mind wanders, all kinds of things come up. So I want you to think about play and I, I really do have a challenge for you. And I'd love for you to add your version of play in the comments. Um, there's someone, um, I, here's, there are micro moments of play. Can you schedule some play or some off time in your book? Some off time that's just for you, just for you. Maybe reading a book can be a, a meditative uh, form of, of play. You know, if you were a kid and you loved playing with Play-Doh, you know, maybe, maybe you'd love to take a pottery class, maybe baking bread. I mean, I know baking bread can be fun for some people. Now, what's my version of fun is not gonna be your version of fun, and that's cool. I'd love for you to schedule some time in your calendar, take a, a and just make it your time, make it your play time. What are you gonna do? Does that whole thought like kind of scare you? Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I haven't played in years. Um, one of the best things I ever did, I lived in Virginia for, oh, almost 20 years. And and um, um, then I had, I adopted a kid and that's like everything went towards taking care of the kid's needs and, and my career. And kid got older and it's like, I, I realized I didn't have a social life. I didn't have much play in my life other than adding a couple of fun days to business trips. And so I joined the Virginia Master Naturalist and yeah, I had to learn some things, but every being outside was my form of play. And that was one of the best things I ever did. And I felt it brought play back into my life Definitely play was not on my radar at all. So, hey, I am reworking the Gutsy Women Club. I've I've taken off my academic hat and putting on my party, my hat, my party hat, my play hat, um, partly because there's so much stuff, crap that's going on in the world. And um, I want you to come into the Gutsy Women Club and I'm going to relaunch next month. And I want to have a way for gutsy women to connect, to grow themselves, to, to become those people that they want to do, to kind of be able to take that risk to move into their dream life, do the things that scare you a little bit, step outside your comfort zone. But I want to create a club atmosphere where you can connect with other people. I want to bring in guest speakers. I, I'd love to do some, you know, get some sponsors to do some monthly drawings and just open your expanse. Uh, and in fact, walking over here, um, you know, the Gutsy Women Club, I've created this thing myself and I'm, I'm going to open it up and try to recruit some partners, some sponsors, some people who want to do some guest speaking. And if that sounds like something you'd like to do, hey, please uh, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, but walking over here, I thought maybe I need a play director. I think I need a play director for the Gutsy Women Club just to remind us to get out there and play. You know, just if you need a little prompt, you know, once a week, once a month to play, we'll give it to you. So, yeah, add play into your life. Let me know how it's going. Schedule it in. You don't know what play looks like. Go back into your childhood. Think about ways that you played back then and find some new ways to play that correspond to that. Find find new ways to play. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of view. I had to work to get some shade here, so, but this is the point. This is, that's the overlook. So I'm gonna head on back to the campground. It's gonna be another hot afternoon. I'm glad I got out here and showed you my playground for the week. Now, go out there and play. Hey, please subscribe below, and hopefully I'll see you in the Gutsy Women Club, gutsywomen.club, doing a big relaunch this month. All right, you guys take care. Bye-bye.